Hi everyone, welcome to Kindy Kids at Home. Uh, this is Julianne, hopefully you all remember me. I would love to see you face to face and hopefully one day we will soon do that when we go to church and we meet at Kindy Kids. Anyway, a really, really big welcome to Talia, Adia, Ruby, Jacob, Joel, Alexander, Zoe and Remy. Hi, hi everybody. Can I just pray for you? Okay. Dear God, I thank you for every one of these beautiful children. I thank you that even though we can't see each other face to face, that you are with us in our homes, with our families, and that you love us so much. I pray that you will give us a good time together. Thank you in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Okay. I hope that you are all keeping well and happy. I am. I think that you are probably back at kindergarten now with your friends and having a good time. Is that right? Because you couldn't go for a while. It's autumn at the moment. I love the autumn. Have you noticed the red and the gold and the orange leaves of the trees? I really love the autumn. I hope you do as well. Anyway, today we are learning about the fruit of the spirit. And I have here some very yummy fruit. Can you see the fruit? I got it from the shops. A banana, yum. A really nice looking pear, an apple, a kiwi fruit, some yummy strawberries, and my favorite, have a look at those. Great big black grapes. Well, you have been learning about fruit but a different sort of fruit it's called the fruit of the spirit and you have been learning about joy and you've been learning about peace and today we're going to learn about a different sort of fruit that god makes in our lives not this sort of fruit whoops but fruit that he makes inside of us and this fruit is called the fruit of patience and patience is something that god gives us when we have to wait sometimes a long while for something and we have to be patient anyway i want to share a bible verse for, with you first this is from ephesians it's from the bible and this bible verse says be completely humble and gentle be patient bearing with one another in love so that's a little verse of encouragement for us today that we should be patient and love one another Instead of being proud and harsh and impatient and unloving, God wants us to be the opposite and he can help us. There are lots of things in life that we have to wait for, that we don't get straight away. Can you think of something? Just have a, a think for a minute. Is there something you have to wait for that your wish would come quickly, but it doesn't? I thought of something and that is the tooth fairy. Have you had the tooth fairy come visit you? Sometimes you have to wait a long while for that tooth fairy because you get a wobbly tooth and you try wobbling and wobbling and wobbling and it takes ages and ages before it comes out. What about birthdays? Birthdays are one of those things that seem to take forever to come and we have to be patient. And then I can think of Christmas with all the presents that we get and all the lovely family gatherings. And I can think of Easter. What do we do at Easter time? Easter egg hunts, chocolates. And we come to church and we worship God in a wonderful way. So there's lots of things that we have to wait for. Guess what's happening in my family at the moment? We are having a brand new baby come into the world any day now. But you have to wait a long time to have a new baby. From the time the baby starts being made to the time the baby comes, it's about nine months. So we've had to be very patient waiting for this new baby. In the Bible, there are lots of stories about very good people who had to trust God to do something and had to wait for a really, really long while. Did you know that one of the best gifts was Jesus? In fact, the best gift ever. And did you know that God's people had to wait thousands of years for Jesus to come? Did you know that he came at exactly the right time that God said he would? And he was the best gift ever, but... God's people had to be very patient in waiting for him. Anyway, they weren't always very patient. Sometimes they were very impatient. 
And we're going to look at a video now, and it's based on a true story. It's from the book of Exodus. And it's about God's people at a time when they were very impatient and did something very bad. Um, and I want you to listen to the story. And at the end of it, I'm going to ask you, what did they do that God wasn't very happy about? Can you listen really well? Okay, we're about to start. After God brought the Israelites out of Egypt, God invited Moses to join him on top of a nearby mountain so they could talk. So Moses left and went to talk to God. The Israelites waited and waited until they felt like they had waited long enough. They found Moses' brother Aaron and said they were tired of waiting for Moses and they were tired of waiting for God. They told Aaron to make them new gods. So Aaron asked them to take off their gold jewelry and give it to him. Aaron melted down the gold and made a golden idol that looked like a calf. Aaron presented the idol to the Israelites and told them to worship it instead of God. The Israelites offered their sacrifices to their new gods because they were tired of waiting for Moses and they were tired of waiting for God. Meanwhile, up on the mountain, the Lord was giving instructions on how to live, but he knew what was happening down below. God told Moses, Go down to the Israelites. They have forgotten that I brought them out of Egypt. They are worshiping an idol made in the shape of a calf. The Lord was angry and wanted to punish the Israelites, but Moses stood up for them. Please, don't be angry. They are making a bad choice. Let me talk to them. So the Lord sent Moses down the mountain with all of the instructions they had talked about written on two stone tablets. When Moses saw them worshiping the idol, he was so angry he threw down the stone tablets and found his brother Aaron. Aaron, why did you make this idol for these people to worship? Aaron told him that they were tired of waiting for Moses and they were tired of waiting for God. So they made their own gods. Moses took the calf idol that Aaron had made and melted it in a fire. Then he reminded the Israelites. It wasn't a calf that brought you out of Egypt. It was God. He is the only one that deserves your worship. Moses went back to the mountaintop to ask God to forgive them for their foolish worship. Well, did you look and listen very carefully? Because if you did, I think you will know that the people made a golden calf to worship instead of worshipping the one true God. Now, let me just remind you of this story. These people had been slaves in a foreign country called Egypt and they were treated very, very badly and they hated being there. And God decided he would answer their prayers and he would deliver them and he got a man called Moses especially for that purpose. And through a whole lot of amazing things, the people were delivered from their captivity. They were no longer slaves, they were free. And Moses was taking them to a beautiful place called the Promised Land. But on the way there, he had to meet with God on a mountain called Mount Sinai because God had some laws and some rules for the people, for the new life they were going to have. And Moses went up this big, big, tall mountain to talk with God. And all the people waited at the bottom of the mountain. But he was up there for a really long time. Not one day, not two days, not 10 days, not 20 days. Guess how many days? For 40 days he was up that mountain. It's a really long time. And the people got really bored and they said to his brother Aaron, I know what we can do. Let's get all our gold jewellery. Let's melt it all down and let's make something to worship. And Aaron thought, oh, okay, so let's make a golden calf. Uh, and that's what they did. And then the people started worshipping the calf, like saying thank you to the calf. And uh, they decided they'd have a feast to their god. And when Moses came down from the mountain, wow, he was not impressed because it's the God that made the heavens and the earth and everything in it. That's the only God we should worship. And that God was talking to Moses on the mountain and Moses comes down and the people are worshipping a calf made out of gold that couldn't talk, that couldn't love them, that couldn't be powerful or look after them. It was just terrible. And Moses was furious. So you remember he got the Ten Commandments on stone tablets and he, he was so mad about them being so foolish and impatient because they just couldn't wait that he threw them down and he got very angry and he said, we have to get rid of this straight away. We have a great God and we have to worship him and him only. So those people learned a very hard lesson. They had to keep learning that lesson 
that God has everything in his good time and sometimes we have to be patient for a very long while and they weren't and they did something really wrong. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that story. Now, we are going to do something very special. Have a look at this. Da -da -da -da. We are going to make some grass, a grass head person. Now, you can't make this now because your mum or dad has to get you the materials for it, but this is an idea for you to do. Can you see that they have grass hair? The idea of this is that you're going to make a grass man or a grass lady and they're going to have hair, but you have to wait at least 10 days for the hair to grow. So you have to be really, really patient. Do you think you can be patient for 10 days? Anyway, I'm just going to hold this one up as well. And we'll take a good look at this because this has got all the instructions. And you could stop the video and you, mum or dad could take a picture. Or there's going to be a copy anyway. Okay. This is my little uh, grass man and I've actually put some imitation grass on his head because I didn't have 10 days to grow the grass. I was a little bit impatient, but it's justified. Uh, you can see he's got two eyes, he's got a nose, he's got a moustache, he's got a mouth and I've even put a tie with a sticker on him. So it's rather cute, isn't he? So that's what yours will look like when you make your grass man or lady. Now if you come over here, I'll show you the things that you need. You need grass seed, because the grass seed grows the green hair. And you also need some potting mix. You need a spray bottle to keep the thing damp for 10 days, or otherwise it might not grow so well. You definitely need a pair of mum's stockings or some new stockings from the shop. Uh, you need some glue. See the glue? You need a cup like this. Here's a cup. And in actual fact, I've already got my cup with uh, some paper on it and a tie on it. So you need paper and some more paper, which I've got here. You also need, what would a person be without eyes? So you need googly eyes. And I've got a black pipe cleaner to do a moustache. And I've got a pair of scissors. Um, did I say elastic bands? I've got elastic bands. Okay, so this is what you do. I had a stocking and I've already put, first of all, I put the grass seed in, then I put the potting mix in. So I put it in here about the size of a tennis ball and then I tied a knot. So that becomes the face of my little man. Now the next thing I have to do, if I can find it, I have to um, make a nose. So I get an elastic band like that and now I've got my nose. I'm going to put the eyes on next. So I have two bits of glue. One, two. Unfortunately, it's gone across the middle, but never mind. One eye, two eyes. Okay, can you see that? Now I'm going to do a mouth in a red marker. There we go. Kind of that will do for the mouth. And see this little piece of piping here? I'm going to put that around the nose and then turn it over like that and make it kind of like a moustache, just for interest. There we go. Can you see the moustache? And the next thing I do, <clears throat> once I've covered the cup with something to make some clothing and maybe a little tie, I then put some water in my cup about halfway up, then I get my little man and I put this bit in the water, make sure it gets nice and wet and I sit him on top, there we go, and I give him a little spray because he has to keep wet, okay, sorry about that, I'm kind of drowning you, there we go, and in the next 10 days, what will happen if I put this in a sunny spot, it has to be sunny, and I leave it there and every day I give him a little water. What will happen in about 10 days is he will grow some green hair and he will look so handsome, you will not believe it. Okay, there we go. Okay, everyone, um, I've had a lovely time with you today. Even though I haven't seen you face to face, you've seen me and my grass man and I hope that you have fun making him and I hope that you learn to be patient having to wait those 10 days. 
Um, I'd like to pray for all of you. <clears throat> so, dear Father, I pray for Talia, Adia, Ruby, Jacob, Joel, Zoe, Alexander, and Remy. I pray for them that you will bless them and that you will teach them patience. In Jesus' name, amen. Bye.